Objects are the fifth programming pillar. Well, let's have a look at the objects in C Sharp. Of course, we need a class to do anything in C Sharp because C Sharp is an object oriented language, but we can declare a class besides this one. So let's declare a class dog that can eat and that can exercise and that is happy or not happy, depending on how much he ate or he exercised. So our class dog has a private int food item which starts with zero property. This is called a property that uh, has a type and an accessor of visibility which is private. So people will not be able to access our food item. This is called encapsulation and it's good to keep our data that only we should concern with in our class hidden from the rest of the world. Let's define a public void feed. Void means there is no return type. Int food quantity food item plus equals food quantity. So here we, use, we are using this food item property. We could have also written this that, but it's unnecessary because there is no confusion about who food eaten is. And we are adding to food eaten what comes in this parameter food quantity. Let's make another function which tells us if the dog is happy. Public void is happy. I'm using a different coding standard. Let's keep it here for consistency. Actually, we should put it down. I think in C sharp the rule is to put it down here like this. I prefer it like this. But I keep switching between Java, C sharp, PHP, and the Java people are very strict about keeping this part, this curly brace here. But we are in C sharp. We can put it here. Okay. If food it can it's below fifty, the dog hasn't ate too much and eaten too much we will write the fact that the dog is not happy because he is hungry okay else if Food eaten smaller than or equals 100, so greater than 50, because if it's 50, it goes to this line and no longer goes to the else. In this case, we will write it's shift up to move a shift to the left. We'll write that the dog is actually happy. And finally, else, if it's greater than 100, that's the only case left. We will write that the dog is not hungry, is not happy, because he ate too much. And, and we'll create another function. Let's read this space. A public void. Exercise which decreases the food eaten by fifty. Okay. Now we have our dog object. We have created our dog class. Let's create an object from this class. So to create an object, we give it a type. So the dog is the type and the next dog is the variable. Equals new dog. We will fit the dog. 120. Well, let's see if the dog is happy. Let's exercise the dog. And let's see if the dog is happy now. 
Okay, what's the problem here? There is no problem, so let's just weird ID stop. If we run this program, we get the dog is not happy because he ate too much, we give it 120, and if you remember, he's only happy between 50 and 100. And then we excite the dog, which takes 50 out of the food he ate, and we ask if he's happy, so he will be happy. So, like you see, the dog class has properties, groups together properties, and methods and he encapsulates his functionality which means he, he keeps it hidden we don't know about this food eaten property and we don't care about it he keeps it to himself and we are able to use the language more syntactically more like natural speech we create a dog a new dog and we feed it we ask if he's happy we exercise it and we ask if he's happy again this is much easier to work with much clearer what is going on here there are the advantages of objects, but I won't go into them in an introductory video. Congratulations, you now know about the five pillars of programming in C-sharp. This is what the programmers use 70% of the time, but the other 30% of course it's in the details and it takes a few years to learn. But if you are a programmer, you learn it by doing and by getting paid for it.